Introduction to Neural Networks with C-Sharp, Class 5, Part 1. Hello, welcome to Class Session 5. In this class session, we're going to see another way to train neural networks. In the previous class session, you learned that you could train neural networks using backpropagation. Backpropagation is by no means the only way that you can train a neural network. You can also use genetic algorithms. In this class session, we will explore exactly what a genetic algorithm is and how it can be applied to neural networks. We will see that there's two primary ways that a gen genetic algorithm can be used to train a neural network. First, we can provide it with a training set, just like we did before. We will see a simple example that trains the feedforward neural network for XOR with a training set. This is going to be applied to any training set and we will see in later class sessions that we can also apply genetic algorithms or simulated annealing to get back propagation over a certain issue that it runs into called local minimas. So we will look at that sort of tra hybrid training as well. We'll also see that you can use a genetic algorithm when you don't have a training set. You simply need to be able to evaluate if the outcome was good or bad. We will show how you could adapt a neural network to playing the game tic-tac-toe, which is called crosses and knots in some part of the world, and you will see that you don't need a training set for this. You simply can use the outcome of the game. If the neural network lost, that's bad. If the neural network won, that's good. If the neural network drawed, it's not quite so good. So we will see how to apply genetic algorithms in these two distinct ways to neural networks. We will also see that genetic algorithms can be used completely independently of neural networks. We will apply the genetic algorithm to the traveling salesman problem. And you will see that the genetic algorithm can be used to find an optimal path amongst several cities that a traveling salesman has to visit. We will now begin by explaining exactly what a genetic algorithm is. Genetic algorithms are based on genetics. A major component of genetics is DNA. Here you see a DNA double helix. This DNA molecule represents a stream of information. The information is contained in the individual amino acids, which are the individual rungs of the ladder shape that you see here. To use a genetic algorithm to solve a problem, you must represent that problem in a way similar to how DNA is represented. That is, you must represent that problem as a long sequence of elements. How you convert data into this array of elements is part of the problem of adapting the problem to a genetic algorithm. We will take a look at how this is done and how you can convert a neural network to a long sequence of numbers. Here you see a long sequence of numbers. It represents sort of the same thing as the DNA molecule. The data contained in that long sequence of numbers must represent the problem that you are attempting to solve. By converting that problem into the sequence of numbers, you will allow the genetic algorithm to perform chromosomal crossover. Crossover is where you take genetic material from two separate DNA molecules or problems and create molecules based on those. This is similar to the breeding process that occurs among organisms. You have a mother and a father. Both the mother and father contribute DNA material and one or more offspring is produced. Ideally, these offspring are better able to solve the problem than the original parent was. Here you see a mother and a father DNA molecule. These two molecules can combine to create one or more offspring. These offspring will contain genetic material from both the mother and the father. The process by which DNA material is selected from the mother and the father is called chromosomal crossover. 
We will learn more about this later, but basically what happens is splices are taken from each of the two molecules that you see here, and these combine to produce offspring. These offspring will share traits from the parents and ideally will be better suited to solve the problem than the parent was. However, this is not always the case. All children will be sorted and the least suitable ones will be discarded and not allowed to mate. You also notice that the two chromosomes are the same length. This is very important. Here you see two DNA molecules that are not of the same length. These two molecules are not compatible so they could not be paired to produce offspring. This is the same problem you will run into with computer programs and genetic algorithms. When you reduce a potential solution to a problem to a numeric sequence, all solutions must produce the same length of binary data. If they do not, you will not be able to combine traits from the two parents and produce offspring. This will not produce a solution. So you must structure your data in such a way so that all of the binary data from the two, or from potential solutions, must be of the same length. Different books will use different terms in different ways to describe genetic algorithms. These three terms will be used in this course. I want to explain how they will be used in this course and how they're also used in the book. In biology, a gene is part of a chromosome, and a chromosome is part of an organism. In this class, we're going to represent the genes as the individual numbers that make up the potential solution. Genes will go together to produce chromosomes. So a chromosome is kind of like the DNA molecule we just saw. It is a strand of genes. Then one or more chromosomes will go together to produce an organism. However, in this class, we will only deal with organisms that are composed of a single chromosome. This will make things more simple to implement. Now let's look at how crossover actually occurs. Here you see two DNA molecules, the mother and the father. Ideally, these would be two chromosomes that have shown characteristics that make them able to solve the problem particularly well. We want to breed these two good solutions and produce two offspring. You can see that we use two cut points. These cut points are going to basically just cut right through the long numeric sequences that make up the mother and the father solutions and splice them. You can then see how they're paired back together to produce the two offspring. Look at offspring one and two. You can see that both of these two offspring share characteristics from both the mother and the father. This is exactly how the algorithm that we will look at in the next part actually breaks the two parents apart. Mutation is another important concept for genetic algorithms. In nature, many mutations come from the radiation put forth by the sun. In genetic algorithms, sometimes the population pool simply will not have all of the features needed for a successful solution. Mutation occurs when random changes are introduced into the parent chromosomes. This will add additional features that would not normally have been in the population set. This concludes part one. In the next part, you will see how to actually implement a genetic algorithm in code. We will implement a generic genetic algorithm that can be used for neural networks as well as other general tasks such as the traveling salesman problem. We hope you will continue with part two. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.